All right, good afternoon, everybody. As a courtesy to your fellow media members, as well as the coaches and student athletes, please silence your cell phones. Please provide your name and media affiliation each time you ask a question during the press conference. If you're joining us via Zoom, please use the raise hand function for questions. We'll address questions in the room first before getting to Zoom if time allows. A video recording of the press conference on cell phones or cameras is prohibited. You're welcome to record audio if you'd like. Um, so we're going to get started with questions for our student athletes. Ayanna Thompson and Kennedy Todd Williams from Old Miss. So uh, you can go ahead and raise your hand. We'll be passing around a microphone. We can get started. Uh, David Eckert, the Clarion Ledger. Um, it's for, for Ayanna. I'm, what do you tell yourself to, to stay ready? I mean, obviously, you played a lot more yesterday than you have recently. What, what's that kind of like mentally? Um, honestly, for me, it's just being ready for my teammates. I know what this means, and I just want to keep going. I want to see Team 49 keep going, so just being ready for my teammates. Tyler Horka, Blue and Gold Illustrated. I'll ask one of each of y'all. Y'all can decide which one you want. But I'm going to ask about Hannah Hidalgo and then about Sonia Citrone. Um, obviously, two of Notre Dame's best players. Uh, Citrone had 29 points yesterday. When they're working in tandem like that, how hard are they to guard? And then if one of y'all just want to speak specifically about Hidalgo and the, the season that she's had as an All-American as well. Um, well, I mean, it's the whole team. Um, I think for us, it's just about sticking to our principles. Um, we know that um, they are hard to guard, um, especially those two. But uh, just being ready, um, you know, staying in front of them and really sticking to our principles is going to be the keys. Um, we know that Hidalgo is a scrappy player, um, but, you know, it's just it's about us at this point. Piggybacking off with what Toddy said, just understanding personnel, um, knowing not to play with the ball in front of Hidalgo and knowing that Sonya is looking to score. Kurt Rallo, Associated Press. Kennedy, can you talk a little bit about um, – how some of the environments you played at in the SEC can prepare you for uh, playing in a second round game on an opponent's home court? Um, yeah, I mean, playing on a second, you know, opponent's court, uh, you know, they're going to bring their fans. Um, so we're just going to be prepared for that. Uh, they, we know that they're going to have a crowd. So it's, it's, an about, it's about um, staying to who we are um, and just not – not letting the environment affect us. Uh, we have time, you know, on the court today. So we're just going to be, you know, getting getting ourselves familiar with the court. And, um, yeah. For, for both of y'all, I mean, ha have you had a chance to look over the film from last night yet? And I guess how did you kind of feel about that performance on second looking? Is it what you were hoping for? You're regarding to us? Um, I feel like after looking at the film, we've really looked at our transition defense. We know that Notre Dame likes to score in transition, so we've been working on and talking about what to do to fix what we did yesterday. Any additional questions for – Hey, Kennedy, uh, Sam Gore the SPN. Uh, you played in the ACC, now you're in the SEC. Are there any noticeable differences or similarities between the competition in, in both the conferences and the style of play? Absolutely. Um, it's about the physicality. The physicality was super different. Um, and I think it's kind of helped me prepare, you know, going in, especially playing against a, a, an ACC team. Uh, there's so, uh, so many differences. Um, and similarities, of course, but it's really just about, you know, the tougher team. And, um, you know, I'm excited to play, you know, an ACC team that I'm familiar with. So it's just about, you know, just being, being a dog out there and just, you know, being the tougher team. Any other questions for our student athletes? All right. Thank you very much. Thank you. Oh, and did we have a question on Zoom? Um, I don't – oh, we have one question on Zoom. Sorry. <laughs> Just had a hand come up here. 
So we'll go to Evie Van Pelt from the Rebel Walk. Hi there. Um, Kennedy, can you talk a little bit about what made you choose to come to Ole Miss and transfer and play for Coach Yo? Yeah, I really wanted to go to the next level. I really want to go to the, to the next level. And, you know, my vision and into myself and this program, you know, aligned with Coach Yo. And I just really wanted to get better um, and, you know, go further than we did last year. Um, so it was just a it was a growth effort for me um, to, you know, just be better than, you know, what I was before. And, you know, just the commitment that I had to this team and uh, to the coaches and stuff. I just really wanted to be better for the team. Do we have any other questions in the room or on Zoom? All right. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it. Now have head coach Yolette McPhee McEwen for Ole Miss. Feel free to raise your hand for questions. We'll do the room first and then go to Zoom as well. Questions to get us started? Hi, Kurt Rollo, Associated Press. Can you talk a little bit about, um, is this a, a, gonna be a game of attrition? Do you try to wear Notre Dame down? What's, what's the plan uh, that would help you guys be successful? Kurt wants the game plan. <laughs> We're definitely at Notre Dame, aren't we? <laughs> Did you ask Neil for the game plan? No, uh, uh, I'm just kidding. Uh, <laughs> we, we try to wear everybody down, um, no matter what. We, that is our style of play, 94 feet. Um, like I said yesterday, it seemed like Marquette was, you know, in charge of the pace, but really they weren't because that's not how they play. And so what we try to do is make teams play, um, diff make teams adjust to how we play, which is up and down, fast, and, you know, really make you have to – work for every single bucket that you get. And I think naturally it wears teams down. And we've played some really elite level three-point shooting teams. And as you can see last night, they just didn't have the legs when they really needed it. Uh, and that is because of the work we put in the first 30 minutes of the game. Tyler Horka, Blue and Gold Illustrated. Y'all obviously beat a number one seed last year. Mm -hmm. This is a number two. Same kind of deal, though, playing on their home floor. How much does that experience help you guys? And uh, just looking at Notre Dame, does it feel like they're one of those top-level teams and, and it would mean a lot to beat them? Yeah. I mean, <clears throat> first of all, anytime you get to win another game, it's a big deal. I think the committee has done a great job with getting the best teams in the field. Um, and so the fact that we're one of the 32 remaining, it means something. Uh, as far as... The experience, hopefully it does work out for us, but as you can see, we rely on a bunch of different players throughout the course of the game. I don't think our depth is talked about a lot because maybe they don't show up, all their numbers don't show up in the box score, but any time that you can have people play minutes and it not hurt you, it, that is depth. Um, I don't care if the score is the same when they got in to when they left, the fact that they weren't in the negative is 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 key. Notre Dame uh, is is a very good team. I think the Southeastern Conference has prepared us for that. Uh, just playing high level teams with big time players. You know, you talk about star studded freshmen. Last year we had Flage, and then this year it's Michaela Williams and Malaysia Fulwali. So we have a good bit of star power in, in, our, in our conference. So I don't know that our team will be emotional any way, good or bad. We just want to win. And when you talk about the star-studded freshman, mm -hmm. you're alluding to Hannah Hidalgo, yeah. I'm assuming. Um, but how good is she and, and what kind of threat does she pose to y'all? Well, I guess we're going to find out tomorrow. Because <laughs> sometimes TV lies to you. So I'm excited to see her in person. You know, I didn't, I haven't had a chance to watch her in person, obviously, because we're not in the same conference. 
And a lot of times they play when we play. So this is the most film I've really been able to watch on her just because we really had no reason uh, to do so before. But I do know that she's a dog and she's uh, deserving of everything that she's gotten. And I don't think they would be where they were, where they are without her. Hi, Coach. Uh, Anthony Anderson, South Bend Tribune. Uh, first off, uh, in general, and I know it varies from venue to venue, but how, how big would you say the home court advantage is for NCAA tournament teams? And then secondly, were you surprised or disappointed at all? You're probably too busy working, but to, to what extent it cleared out to, for the second game yesterday? Oh, yeah. Look, I, it could be one person in the fa- – it, it could be nobody. I don't care. When the ball tips up, it's about my team versus the other team. And so – um, obviously, there are such things as home court advantage. But again, when you look at our record, we were 12 and four, so we didn't win all our games at home. You know, we we have played some big time teams on the road, and we've played in front of big time crowds. You know, at our home, we played LSU. Was, we had 9,000 people. We go on the road. South Carolina sold out with 18,000 people. You know, so uh, we've played big crowds throughout our whole conference play and have had to win meaningful games on the road. You know, when we beat Alabama, that was a big win. Uh, You know, uh, Vanderbilt on the road. And then we've played neutral sites, and then obviously we've played in in, uh, Palo Alto last year. As far as we're concerned, we – you know, we have the philosophy, we're all we got, we're all we need – And uh, we just kind of hone our own energy no matter what. And I kind of took that from South Carolina. Like, that's something that they say, and they got 18,000 fans, and they're still like, we all we got, we all we need, (laughs) you know? And I thought that that was powerful, like, because at the end of the day, it really matters who you're in the the foxhole with every day. And so we we don't, I don't, I'd be surprised if we were to get rattled I'm more concerned about home court advantage when it comes to officiating, if I'm being completely transparent, Uh, just because, you know, sometimes officials are human and some of these crowds are brutal. (laughs) So sometimes I'm like, did you make that call for the fans or did you, you know what I mean? Like they just caught up, they get emotional. Uh, But I have trust that we're going to have the best fish officials in the country tomorrow. And I le- I'm leaning on that. And so that shouldn't even be a factor. I just expect it to be a great game. Coach uh, David Eckert, Clarion Ledger. Um, what, what's your process been like preparing on a short turnaround? What, what were the last 12 hours like, and what are, what's the rest of today going to be like for you, your staff and, yep. and your team? Well, this is definitely more refreshing than in the SEC tournament or when we were in the Bahamas because you have no time. You know, you play and then you rest and you play the next day. And when we were in the Bahamas and we won the tournament, we didn't even walk through anything. And that's why our, that's why we're built for the tournament because our system is our system. We don't have to change it. We make a few tweaks and that's about it. Um, so we honestly feel like this is a gift <laughs> because we get a day where we can watch film and truly prepare uh, for for a great staff and, and a great team in Notre Dame. Uh, last night, I think we were up coaches until about midnight, and then, you know, we watched film this morning at 11 for about an hour, and now uh, we're here. So um, as far as we're concerned, we treat it like, almost like a conference prep, you know, even though we get two days, uh, this is more than enough time for us to prepare. Eric Hansen with Inside ND Sports. I got a couple for you. The first one is you talked about watching film. When you watch film, what do you see in Maddie Westfeld, who's not your typical mm. four, and, and the challenges of defending her? Yeah, man, she she is is a special player. You know, to me, she's a secret sauce she she does a lot of different things that we like you said we hadn't seen a four player have to do she's can be a matchup problem so we have to think about 
how they're going to try to use her for their advantage. Because I think it's all about advantage basketball, at least it is for us. Uh, but great coaches, and I think Niel is one, is they're going to look for advantages. And I think, you know, it's no secret. People see us switch ball screens. And so how are they going to try to take advantage of that? And what are we going to do to counter what they try to do as far as taking an advantage of that? Last night, Marquette did the same thing. Um, and they got us a, a couple times, but but then we were we made some adjustments and we were successful too. Um, listen, I know they got what six seven players, but they just won a, ch a, a conference championship, you know. And I got twelve and we didn't, so we're not gonna make this narrative as they're the underdogs. They're the two seed, we're the seven seed. So as far as we're concerned, they have the pressure. We don't. The other thing I wanted to get your thoughts on is it's been a season where it feels like, and, and there's numbers to back this up, women's basketball profile has taken a huge leap. Yeah. Why do you think this is the time that that's happening, and what do you think is driving it? Well, I think uh, definitely social media is has, has been great. I thought I feel like the media has done a great job in, in – in accepting the fact that women's basketball has star power, NIL is big too. And so all of these companies that are utilizing these student athletes for their name, image, and likeness has truly upped the brand. And I'm talking about, you know, back in the day, when you think about star power, you know, I was a part of the original Big East. I was at Pitt when... We were all in there. Notre Dame, St. John's, West Virginia. Remember that? Like, I know you look young, but, <laughs> but uh, you know, back then it was it was Skyler, and then it was like UConn. Those were the stars, and then and everybody else. But now in every region you have a star, you know, East, West, North, South, Midwest. Uh, you have stars, and that's what makes it cool. And they're not afraid to not promote themselves and their brand. And, and, and that's women, you know. Look, I've been married 16 years. We're a little smarter than men, right? <laughs> so we know how to utilize our brand. And, and they've just done a great job of it. And uh, people have caught on. And, and, and there are a lot of girl dads out there. So now it's not, it, doesn't, it isn't embarrassing anymore. You know, women's basketball is here. And I, and I expect just an upward trajectory as we continue to grow our game. Kurt Ronald, AP. Uh, Notre Dame hit six of its first eight threes yesterday. Can you talk about the challenge of defending the perimeter but not allowing Hidalgo to yeah. create the way she does? Well, our philosophy is dictate and disrupt, but even – even more in depth, let's take away the – let's go a little deeper in the layers. It's us against the ball. And so when we play, when we defend, it's not whomever we decide to guard Hidalgo. It's not that person against Hannah. It's us against Hannah. And so that's our philosophy. And so when we put a lot of stops together, no one takes the credit because – Someone took away the vision for the pass so they couldn't make a perfect pass. Someone got their hand on the line. Someone shrunk the floor, and that is our system. So we don't ever look at a matchup like, oh, it's going to be, I don't know, like Hannah versus, you know, Kennedy Todd Williams. No, it's Hannah versus Team 49 in our defense, and that's what's worked for us. Karis! <laughs> oh man, I, I don't, I couldn't be who I am without my husband. Like, he is the biggest critic, cheerleader, coach in the house. Make no mistake. And during the conference play, my dad and mom, they come and they stay with us. And my dad's 78, and he's a Hall of Fame coach and whatnot. And <laughs> when I walk into the house, they're in another room 
breaking down the next opponent. <laughs> and now they got my mom doing it. And so my mom's like, oh, I'm watching film. So like everyone, this is a basketball family. And, and I think we broke through to our six-year-old yesterday because we were leaving the hotel room and Yuri says, mommy, I said, Yuri, where's your tablet? She goes, I'm not taking my tablet. I'm going to watch the game. And I gave her a high five, and she had so much pride. And then when I saw the picture, I didn't even recognize her. I just saw Kelly. And then, of course, the internet does what it does. And then they show Yuri, and she's, like, pissed off at the call. And it was, like, high level. Like, that is perfect, you know? So consider us a basketball slash soccer slash gymnastics family. <laughs> we'll probably have just time for one more question here. <laughs> yeah. No, he he. I, let me tell you something. You know, how I say my tweets are my own. Whatever he does is his. There's no influence by me. Uh, I told you he's the coach in the house. Like he tells me. Sometimes I have to say, Kelly, you're not at practice every day. Like I'm at practice, and and all of the SEC officials know him. <laughs> And he knows them by first name. And, and uh, I didn't know this, but some of our fans said that, you know, I don't sit during the game. And so they said, do you know that your husband doesn't sit during the game? And so if I pace, he paces. If, if I stand, he stands. And so he is fully committed, and, and I love that. All right. Thank you very much, thank Coach. Thank you all. Don't forget, don't forget to ask me on that question. Because I'm a press conference chunky. <laughs> Thanks, y'all. Hammond Communications will post a recording of this press conference in the NCAA Digital Media Hub at ncaa.veritone.com. Transcripts are provided by ASAP and will be posted shortly. Thank you for joining us. Also, as a note, uh, the Notre Dame press conference will begin at 2.15.
Hey, good afternoon, everybody. As a courtesy to your fellow media members, as well as the coaches and student athletes, please silence your cell phones. Please provide your name and media affiliation each time you ask a question during the press conference. If you're joining us via Zoom, please use the raise hand function for questions. We'll address questions in the room first before getting to Zoom if time allows. Video recording of the press conferences on cell phones or cameras is prohibited. You're welcome to record audio if you'd like. So with that, we'll open it up to questions for Notre Dame student athletes, Sonia Citron and Maddie Westville. Hi, ladies. Uh, Anthony Anderson, South Bend Tribune. Uh, Sony, I apologize for not knowing this, but was yesterday the first time that you played with your knee totally exposed, or has that happened along the way, Since obviously since the mm -hmm. injury? And then secondly, how's it feeling? And uh, if that was the first time, was it? did it feel pretty liberating? Yeah, um, I actually think it was because when I stopped wearing my brace, I was still wearing the compression sleeve on it. So. Yesterday was the first day that I didn't have that sleeve or the brace on. Um, and yeah, I mean, it, it's feeling great. Um, definitely feel like I'm back to my pre-injury self. So it's, it's a good feeling. Great. She was feeling pretty good. <laughs> What's that? I said I think she was feeling pretty good yeah. yesterday. <laughs> and my second question is for both of you. Uh, the two of you and, and Hannah have been described as the big three, which is such a common term in basketball now. Do you guys like that, dislike that? And how much do you guys need, really need to be a big six given your, your depth issues going forward? I think it's huge for us to be a big six. Um, you know, I, people have been saying that. I think the important thing for one of the three of us is to set the tone early. Um, and that's kind of where we are at this point. Um, I think the three of us are kind of the leaders, whether it's on the defensive end or offensive end. Um, and so it's just up to one of us to set the tone. Um, and then that also includes AD. That also includes Nat. Um, just for the first people who are out there. Um, but yeah, I think the big six is what is really what we need to lock in on. Jeffrey Clark, Fighting Irish Wire. Sonia, you tied your career high in scoring yesterday and NCAA tournament game no less. When you look back on yesterday, what's going to be your main takeaway from it? Um, I mean, I think I, I played aggressive, I played confident, and I think I'm just going to take those two things for to the rest of the games that uh, I play this season because I think that's just really important for not only me but the team. When I'm playing like that, it helps everyone around me. So just keep playing aggressive and confident. And Maddie, it looks like you guys have your hands full with Madison Scott with, with, for Old Miss tomorrow. So have you had a chance to watch video of her? And if you have, what strategy do you think you can best implement to try and neutralize her? Yeah, she's a great player. We. Um, in the past uh, what, like 16 hours, we've been doing a lot of film, uh, really just trying to be strategic. Um, we had a good practice today, really just trying to, um, like I said, be strategic with their team. They have a good offense. Uh, so, you know, she's a great player. Just try to play hard on her. We have additional questions? Both of y'all, I guess, talked about Maddie a little bit there. When you look at the rest of you know, Ole Miss and just kind of them collectively, what do you see? What stands out? Um, yeah, they're a, great, uh, they're a great team. They're really athletic. I think that's one thing that we um, just need to lock in on defensively and also rebounding is a really big key for us to win. Um, you know, they crash the glass on every offensive uh, possession and opportunity. So um, I think... If we can win the rebounding battle, I think it'll look good for us tomorrow. Jake Miller, Notre Dame Observer. Maddie, going back to 2021, you've dealt with a lot of cancellations. Obviously, that COVID, the season after the COVID year, a lot of crazy things. What's it like to play in a tournament game um, like this one day after you had a win when you hadn't played a game like that in two weeks? What's the turnaround? What's, what's it like today to try to get ready for that tomorrow? Yeah, um, I think you could kind of see the rust a little bit fall off yesterday. Um, so I think it's a really good position for us, you know, just trying to get back into everything. Um, we had a couple great weeks of practice, um, just trying to prepare ourselves for what this tournament was going to bring. And I think today was a really good day of practice. We're really locked in, really focused on what we need to do tomorrow. Um, and I think now, you know, we can settle in now. We can, the anxiety is gone, all that is gone. So we can really play our game tomorrow. I'm excited. Eric Hansen, Inside Andy Sports, this is for both of you. 
we saw Olivia practicing a little bit yesterday. I just wondered if that's a regular thing and how does she maybe elevate your preparation when she's participating? Um, I mean, she definitely makes us better. I think no one wants to guard her. So when she is the player I have to guard, she definitely challenges me um, and challenges all of us. I mean, she's she's an amazing player. So when she's on the, the other side, it's definitely something that we all, I don't know, just helps prepare us for whoever we're, pl like whoever we're playing, so. For sure. She's one of the best players in the country, so um, just having that to prepare against, we can prepare against anybody we got to play against. For either of you or both of you, uh, Nat Marshall is not accustomed to her career playing a lot of minutes, but she's played about 34 and 33 the, the last two games, was really efficient offensively yesterday. Just the way she's inserted herself into this so smoothly, uh, your take on, on how she's doing right now? Absolutely. She's really stepping into her role. Um, really, really proud of how she's honestly came out this whole year. Um, she looks different, and she's blossomed this year. Um, and so now she finally gets the opportunity to, you know, um, make that shine. And so I'm just really proud of her, and, you know, she's got more to show. So we need her toughness. We need her rebounding her, you know, all the, thi all the little things that she does that people don't really notice. Um, but, yeah, she's, she's been doing great for us. Uh, just a quick follow-up for both of you on that earlier Big Three question. Um, you two have both been here longer than Hannah has. So as the two veterans out of that trio, uh, do you feel you have some sort of responsibility to her to kind of show her the ropes even more, e even though she's been your scoring and steals leader, among other things, this year? Um, yes and no. I mean, I think me and Maddie take it upon ourselves to just bring the team together, especially during the game, just be that calm that calmness and that just just bring everyone together but I think Hannah does a great job of not really she doesn't need to be led she leads our team and I think I don't think there's been a bunch of times where like we we necessarily have to lead her even though she is a freshman she plays like she has a lot of experience so I think it's more us just trying to bring the team together being being that we've been through this a bunch of times already so yeah, I agree with that. It's kind of more so just a general leadership stance, you know, um, her as well as anybody else and us too also um, just kind of bringing us together and making sure that we're okay, we're on the same page and never too high, never too low. Any additional questions for our student athletes? This one's from Maddie. Um, Coach mentioned after the game it was the most students' tickets that they've ever sold in the history of the program. I wondered, as somebody who's been here, um, you know, coming out of COVID and, and these crowds starting building, what does it mean to you to have your fellow students? And do you get a sense on campus when you're at classes and stuff that people are jumping on the bandwagon? Yeah, that's incredible. I didn't know that. Um... Yeah, I think historically we've had kind of an older demographic for our, our fan selection, which is great, and everybody is extremely loyal. Um, and it's amazing to hear that we have more students coming. And, yeah, we do like walking around campus. I've noticed more students have been coming up to me and um, noticing who I am and just really excited about uh, women's basketball in general. And so it's really, really awesome to hear that. Anything else? All right, thank you very much. Maddie thank and you. Sonia. We'll have head coach Neil Ivey coming shortly. Same format as the uh, student athlete press conference.
Now we'll welcome head coach Neal Ivey, and we'll go ahead and open it up to questions. Hi, coach. Hi. Kurt Rallo, Associated Press. When it, an opponent's goal, you know what's coming, right? <laughs> when, <laughs> no, I'm looking at <laughs> When an opponent's goal is to get physical, try and wear your team down, how do you counter that? What's the plan? Well, definitely just have to mix up some, some of our defenses, um, going a little bit of zone, trying to um, match their physicality. Um, just can't stay in one thing too long. And just, you know, for tomorrow, I'm going to I'm gonna go see what, what works the best for them. You're welcome. Jeffrey Clark, Fighting Irish Flyer. Uh, Coach, last year you were eliminated in part because of your last game you got into some foul trouble. And then yesterday you had three players with four fouls. Nobody fouled out, but it was still foul trouble. And that seems to have been kind of a trend lately. So as the competition gets tougher into this tournament, what, step you, what steps are you taking to address that? Definitely. Um, I'm always talking and stressing uh, the importance of defending without fouling. And we have been in this situation before, like you mentioned. And so some of it's just learning and, and adjusting and pivoting um, when you're in the moment in the game. And yesterday, I, hopefully, we learned our lesson. You know, there are a couple fouls that we had off of um, screening, you know, screening fouls, things that we can clean up, some touch fouls, um, not being disciplined. So we talked about those things last night and today. And so hopefully we adjust tomorrow. Last year, you beat Mississippi State to get out of the second round. Is it lost on you that for the second straight year, you're playing a Mississippi-based team in the SEC in the second round? I mean, just coincidence, I guess. You know, we've luckily we've had a bunch of experiences this season playing against two SEC teams in South Carolina and Tennessee, and then um, playing very similar style in NC State and Louisville. So, going to draw upon those experiences playing against a team like Ole Miss. Anthony Anderson, South Bend Tribune. Uh, Nat Marshall hadn't played a lot of minutes her whole career, and then she ends up playing, I think, 33 and 34 in two of the bigger state games you've, you've had. She seemed really efficient uh, yesterday on the offensive end. How, how has she come along so, so quickly in these games and looked so comfortable, if, if that's how you feel about it? Yeah, well, I'm super proud of Nat. Um, she's basically stepping up to the challenge, and she's rose to the occasion without having Kylie. Um, she's she understands the moment as far as just being, you know, part of this program and watching this go to, um, you know, Sweet 16 the past couple seasons. So she's just maximizing her opportunity, and I'm really, honestly, really proud of her. Um, and she's coming, she's come in, and she's done really, really well the past two games. And um, I'm really, I'm really pleased with her effort and her performance. Tyler Horko, Blue and Gold Illustrated. Uh, Neil Hannah said yesterday that maybe some of those touch fouls and, and some of the things that are uncharacteristic of your team could be attributed to the, I think it was a 13-day layoff that you had, so. Of course she said that. <laughs> well, it's not all she said, but no. You know, um, I'm curious how good it was to just get back on the court and maybe get some of those things out of the way and start getting back to your brand of basketball. Yeah, I mean, she's right. I mean, we haven't played in, in 13 days. You definitely have to get the rest off. And um, it was time that they needed off. Um, we got a lot of great recovery. And, you know, I feel like we adjusted. It took a minute, but it, it definitely is one of those games where you can tell we have not played in a while. So um, very grateful to be have, to have moved on and we're in the round of 32. And hopefully tomorrow we come out 40 minutes um, and play a little bit more discipline and um, not get not to have those you know, touch fouls like we had yesterday. Coach Yo has kind of put Ole Miss on the map, and, and they've been obviously really good. Beat Stanford in the NCAA yes. tournament last year. So I'm curious. Um, obviously, you don't have time to, to study them often, but just your impressions of like the program that she's building, and to have them on this stage competing with y'all. Yeah, absolutely. She's um, you know such a great um, rising star. Um, she's of course beating Stanford last year. I watched that game. Um, bringing her her program to the Sweet 16 was massive for her program and her era. Um, so she's doing a phenomenal job, and they play for her. They play hard, great athletes, but also you know have a lot of balance um, defensively and offensively. Have a lot of weapons. So um, hats off to her for what she's doing. Um, and again, tomorrow I'm excited for the matchup and looking forward to you know another ACC-SEC battle. Coach, I asked the players about this. We had seen Olivia practicing with you guys the other day and uh, pretty intense <laughs> while we were there. And I'm just wondering, what do you feel like she gives your team in terms of preparing you guys and, and her leadership and those kind of things? 
Right. She gives so much. Um, she's worked so hard to get in this position as far as almost a year from her surgery. And um, she's playing at a high level. She's in great shape. Um, she's really strong, really confident in her knee. And, you know, she comes out there outside of her, her play, which is just elite. Her, her play is elite when she's on the floor. Um, she just brings a level of competitiveness and experience that really helps our team. Just, you know, preparing for other matchups, but also just the things that she does when she's running the, running the offense. You know, like you can learn a lot from her when you're watching her and competing against her. So I'm really proud of her to see where she's at at this point. Um, it's going to be, like I said, be mentioned before, like she's going to be fantastic next season. But especially if some, watching somebody come back from injury, it's always really amazing to watch her back on the floor with the team in a, in a jersey playing and doing what she loves. Okay, I broke a rule. I was supposed to say Eric Hansen, Inside ND Sports. And for the transcriber, it's E-N and not <laughs> O-N. Um, but my other question is, I, I asked Coach Yo about this. You know, we've seen all season – the profile of women's basketball take a huge leap this year. And I'm wondering, from your standpoint, what, what's driving that? I think our style of play, um, the, the programs, the players, um, you have such elite um, talent. You know, you have generational talents all across the board. Um, our senior-led senior, senior -led, um, players, as in Caitlin Clark, the big household name players, but then also you have a lot of rising stars. You have an elite freshman. Um, the style of play is just amazing, and I think we just we have fed off the momentum of last last year, last year's Final Four, and it has started. I mean, from the beginning, um, our game is hot. I know everybody understands that, but it's the way we're playing. We're playing at a high level. Every game is just an incredible matchup, cr incredible performances. Um, record-breaking performances, so it's just really fun, great basketball, and I'm really proud to be a part of this. Kurt Rallo, AP. If an opponent over-focuses on Hannah, uh, how, how does your team make them pay for that? Well, luckily, I have a lot of balance on this team. Um, Hannah d draws a lot of attention, and, you know, Sony Citron, who had her career high yesterday, she can run the point for me. KK can run the point for me. We have multiple, um, inverse, a lot of versatility within our offense, and I think that's what makes us um, very special because we have a lot of players that can score, uh, score at three levels. So um, d Hannah does draw a lot of attention, but I, I love that we have guards that can also handle the ball and also can get us in the offense and score. Neil, just since it came up, uh, I just want to clarify something. How, how long in your mind has uh, Olivia been full tilt now? And does it at all whet her or your appetite for wishing maybe she was playing? Oh, I mean, of course. I mean, I, I love. I, I would love to, for her to be running the team and be on the floor. I think it's – I mean, it's been multiple months, so I'm not sure exactly um, – maybe four. four I, I'm not sure exactly the, the time of – when she's, it, it was the progression of her transitioning back on the court. It was one, one on one, two, two on two, three on three, four on four, and five on five. So maybe a couple, couple months that she's been live five on five. But um, just when I see her on the court, it, it honestly just it warms my heart. But it brings a smile to my face because, um, again, like I said, she worked really hard to get to this position, um, to get back, to be in great shape, uh, to be feeling good, feeling confident, and um, you know I'm looking forward to her being actually back on the floor with us. Uh, and I guess while we're on the subject, how hard would it have been to maybe implement her into the lineup when you have Hannah doing what she's doing as the team's point guard? Mm -hmm. um, just from a coaching perspective, would that have been a smart move, a, a difficult move? Just how, how would you see if she were to yeah. have come back in the last one or two months? I mean, I think it's a positive. I think she's so dynamic. Um, and I, I think Hannah and Liv playing together is going to be something special for college basketball. So it wouldn't be a problem at all. Um, I mean, Han or Liv, Liv, she knows my system. She knows exactly what, I, what I'm looking for. She knows how to run a team. She knows how to score. So not a problem at all. And I'm excited for them to be together. Additional questions for Coach Ivy? All right. Thank you very much, Thank Coach. You. Appreciate it. Hammond Communications will post a recording of this press conference in the NCAA Digital Media Hub at ncaa.veritone.com. Transcripts are provided by ASAP and will be posted shortly. Thank you for joining us.